Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. I'd like to open the um, session of the Coventry School Committee. I have six o'clock. And could we have a roll call, please, um, Mrs. Martin? <coughs> Catherine Patton. Here. David Florio. Here. Luke Murray. Here. Donna Kalunian. Here. James Pearson. Here. Craig Levis. Here. Don Cowart. Here. Harold Sands. He's frozen. I see him. <laughs> yeah, he looks frozen, but um, he'll probably here, get here. back on. Oh, he just said <laughs> here. He did. Okay. Um, all right. Um, could we have a moment of silence as we consider the work before us this evening? Thank you. And um, it looks like Mr. Florio, you have the honor of reading the mission statement for Coventry Public Schools. Thank you, Madam Chair. The mission of the Coventry Public Schools is to ensure support and challenge all students in an inclusive community to be critical thinkers, <clears throat> effective communicators, reflective learners, responsible individuals, and global citizens. Thank you. Um, moving on to agenda item number two, the approval of our minutes from June 24th. Is there a motion to approve? Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve the minutes of June 24th, 2024 as presented slash amended. I second the motion. Thank you. Any questions or concerns from the committee? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Uh, Mrs. Martin. Catherine Patton. Yes. David Florio? Yes. Luke Murray? I wasn't in attendance, so I'll abstain. Oh, sorry. Donna Kalunian? Yes. James Pearson? Yes. Motion carries four and one abstention. Moving on to the public agenda for the citizens gathered. Um, the following agenda items are open to the public. If there is a motion, uh, if there's a motion on a particular vote before the vote is called, um, I will let the public speak to that motion um, before I call the vote. That being said, we can go on to number three, which is the celebration of the Coventry High School girls softball um, division one state champions. We're, we're gonna have to table that. Um, okay. Chair, I, I um... You didn't hear I hadn't heard back, and then I realized um, the uh, email I sent to the coach was in a draft. So I own that, but I did reach out to them. They'll be at our next meeting. Okay. Uh, All right. Thank you. Day. All right. Thank you. Um, moving on to um, the certified CTA personnel recalls, discussion and votes. Um, I believe I saw the, is there a motion? I think there's one person maybe. Madam Chair, I make a motion to, appro to approve the recommendation of the superintendent that Christopher Lankot, uh, point six, physical education slash adaptive physical education teacher for the district be recalled to position as of July 8th, 2021. I second the motion. Thank you, Mrs. Clunian. Um, any questions from the um, school committee? Anything from the public? I don't see anything. So could we have a roll call vote, please? Mrs. Martin. Catherine Patton. Yes. David Florio. Yes. Luke Murray. Yes. Donna Colonian. Yes. James Pearson. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries five to zero. Uh, moving on to item number five, which is the revised 2021-22 calendar. Uh, Mr. Um, Levis, did you want to stop this? I will uh, turn this over to Mr. Coward. If you don't oh, okay. Hi. So we made uh, really two adjustments to the calendar. Um, I don't know if Jim can bring it up so people can see it. Um, the school, uh, the high school had um, a, a schedule 
that had their um, early release days on Tuesday, they've since adjust their schedule so that the early release days have to be on Wednesdays. So all the early release days on the previous schedule have been shifted from Tuesdays to Wednesdays. It's less disruptive to learning and it fits better into the schedule they have. So that was the first adjustment. Just throughout the calendar, all those Tuesdays will move to Wednesdays. And you can see, for example, on, the fi on, on September, the 15th and the 22nd are both early release days for the high school, where on the previous calendar, they were on Tuesday. So that was the first thing. The second one is in January, um, we have an early release day on the 19th at the high school. We want to make that an early release day for the entire district. And the reason why we want to do that is um, we have a PD council that's been meeting and talking about professional development and some of the requirements that we have with the Right to Read Act, which, we, which if you recall is the one that has to do with uh, teachers in our districts having proficiency and awareness of um, dyslexia and other uh, structured literacy initiatives. We also have new curriculum being adopted in a number of places. And even though our calendar has embedded PD throughout the calendar, we, after analyzing all our PD needs and all the things that we needed to do this year, felt as a committee that we needed a few more hours. And so we thought the least disruptive thing to do would to take that early release day on the 19th, make it an early release day for all the kids, but the teachers would stay on for the full day and the second half of that day would be professional development for the teachers. That's it. Okay, it doesn't impact you. our start day. It doesn't impact our end day. It doesn't impact any of the holidays or vacation weeks at all. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Cowett. Are there any uh, questions from the school committee? You can just raise your hand instead of me calling on all of you. I don't see any questions raised. Is there a motion to approve? Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve the revived, revised 2021-2022 school calendar. Second the motion. Thank you. Um, is there anyone from the public that would like to uh, speak to this question or approval? Hands are up. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. So could we have a roll call vote, please? Catherine Patnod? Yes. David Florio? Yes. Luke Murray? Yes. Donna Colonian? Yes. James Pearson? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries five to zero. Moving uh, on. May I just oh, make sorry. one comment because I just oh, missed sure. it. Under September oh, yeah. 2021, yeah. there's one where there should be an M on the schedule. No, I'm just that. That. Thank you. That's a typo. Okay. We'll fix that. Um, okay. That should require us to come back in front of the board. Right. That's just changing the typo. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, good catch. Uh, moving on to um, number six, which is the school building committee update and discussion. Mr. Murray, would you like to take it away? Yeah, I'll keep it really brief. Um, so I'm going to be scheduling a meeting for next week, which I have to get the agenda out tomorrow. Um, and I've been a little uh, out of it between going away on vacation and coming back to a, an enormous pile of work on the other end. So um, so I've, I reached out to Alita yesterday. We're actually gonna be meeting offline. I've talked to Phil this week to get us back on track. He's created a schedule from his side and we're going to be meeting to kind of get the building committee back up and running. But just to remind everybody that our timetables have changed a little bit. We got some relief from RIDE. So we have a little bit more time to to meet with council, get them up to speed and, and work out the process moving towards a, a bond referendum. So um, more to come, stay tuned. Next meeting, I'll definitely have a bigger update. Okay, are there any questions for Mr. Murray? You can just raise your hand if you have any. Looks good. Anything from the public? Everybody's got a hand raised. Okay. All right. Um, then I guess we can move on to number seven, which is the Rhode Island Department of Health and ride pre-K pre to 12 guidance for the 21-22 school year discussion. So Mr. Levis, did you wanna start that? 
Yes. So uh, this this uh, these documents are posted on our website, and I wanted to share them with the with the school committee. My my, and I, I've talked to to Mr. Anderson and, and you know some of our administrative staff. While Ride has given uh, some guidance about the 21-22 school year, um, I believe it's premature. Um, there's the guidance talks about putting together a policy around wearing masks. <clears throat> I've spoken to other attorneys in, in Mr. Anderson's firm about this. Um, there's guidance around quarantine. There's guidance around transportation. And so what I what I plan on doing, uh, I've received emails from you know several, uh, I say several, probably three parents with concerns. And what I've shared with them is that at the end of July, you know, we plan on meeting with the administrators, taking a look at where we're at in terms of, you know, the nation, where we're at in terms of our region, Rhode Island and Coventry, and um, coming back with, uh, you know, start the planning process. Uh, we, you know, at our first meeting in August, I'd like to come back and say this is all the information we have. Um, my own personal opinion and, and professional opinion is I want to try to come back as normal as possible. And obviously there'll be some stipulations, but I do believe to start the conversation today is very premature. I want people to see the guidance. I mean, the Department of Ed, Department of Health, uh, they're putting it, you know, this is again, my opinion, putting it back on the districts. But I think the process we used last year, uh, again, being very reflective, I think we communicated extremely well um, with the committee, with the community, I, I think our, our, you know, from our, our students, our parents, our, our staff, our administrative team did as well as any community in this state. And, um, but again, I, I shared that again, it's on our, our website for the public to see and if the committee has questions, but I, I do believe that it's you know, something we need to discuss, but not today. We're still processing what we've been through um, and, and trying to reflect. So. Again, I, I, once I received it, I put it on the agenda, we posted it on our website, but I want to state that I, I feel that this is a conversation that we'll, we'll have, uh, you know, within the next three weeks and, and come back before the committee and, and the public and, and I'll share with you what our thoughts are. Uh, and again, I, I feel that we'll put a plan together and, and we'll look for your support. Uh, but today, I just feel that it's if anything, it's going to create more angst in people uh, than really a solution. And, and I never like to pose a problem without a realistic solution. So that's my, where I stand uh, as superintendent on, on the documents today. Uh, thank you, Mr. Levis. Uh, Mr. Florio, do you have any questions for Mr. Levis on that? No, thank you, Madam Chair. All right. Um, Mr. Murray, anything? No, I agree. I think it's premature. The guidance is very broad at this point. Yeah, yeah. And things are continuing to be dynamic. So I think it's prudent to wait. So I agree. Uh, Mrs. Kalunian? No questions. All right. And Mr. Pearson, anything? Uh, statement, maybe not questions. Um, uh, agree that it's a bit premature, but at the same time, you know, we need to be aware as a, a governing body of what's happening in the state and around the country. Um, for example, there there is a petition being circulated statewide uh, for all school districts to remove the mask mandate. So just be aware that that's happening and we could see parents or other concerned parties come before us uh, with with concerns if, if the mask mandate is in effect uh, when we return to school in the fall. Um, and just one one note of uh, I don't know if anyone saw what happened in Missouri today. Um, this is where you know our legislators either weren't forward thinking or didn't help us out any. But in Missouri, they passed some legislation. The governor signed it, I think, today or yesterday, um, to offer some liability protections for certain things like healthcare workers and healthcare facilities and schools that if COVID is transmitted, that you know they're not legally liable unless they're found to be grossly negligent. We don't have those kind of protections, or if we do, they're not strong enough. And I wish the legislature had, had taken something like, like that up this session. Um, but uh, looking forward to talking about this again in three or four weeks. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Pearson. Um, I don't have any comments. I think um, 
there's lots of different groups in the state that are definitely looking into this and there's going to be more talk and dialogue, I'm sure. Um, I know um, Ryask is, um, we have a, a planned meeting with the commissioner and one of the, the first things on the agenda is to talk about, you know, they, they are leaving it up to the LEAs and, and that's putting us in some ways in a difficult place because who knows what individual LEAs will do. And so if, the, if there was more of a rule coming down from RIDE or from the state, it would make, in some ways, our job a little bit um, easier, maybe. I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, we'll, we'll face what we have to face, but um, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And I think, Mr. Levis, you're correct that it's a little, a little early in the sense that we really don't know how this is going to play out as um, you know, we go through the summer. So luckily for our state, where we have pretty high vaccination rates, so... Um, we're in a much better place in some states. So anyway, all right. Is there anyone from the public that would like to weigh in on this before we move on? No one has raised a hand. All right. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Um, then I think we can move to the next um, agenda item, which is the superintendent's report. So you're on again, Mr. Levis. I, well, I just have one item and I, I've shared a uh, documents with the school committee. I also sent out an email today that I hope people had a chance to read um, that in this year's budget was a, a 2% increase for uh, administrators. Um, last year, we came before the school committee. I came before the school committee, but on behalf of the administrators that we understood the fiscal challenges and um, we had a dialogue, public dialogue that the administrators were not going to be asking for raises. Um, I had also included what the 2% for the uh, administrators is. It's $49,300.54. Um, and based on the new policy that was put forward, there, there's three components to that. One was um, COLA cost of living, or it's called CPIW. I shared information. The CPI for 2021 um, won't be out until December. So I shared information from uh, 2018, which was a 2.8%, 2019 was 1.6%, and 2020 was a 1.3%. As of May, uh, and mostly due to energy costs, they said as this year was 5%, but I assume that hopefully that, that, that goes down. Um, and then we also talked, the other component was looking at the difference between the CTA top step teachers and, and administrators. And um, I included information that over the last couple of years, there's been um, a total of 4% given to the, um, the teachers. And uh, the third component, which Ms. Card and I are gonna be are working on, we'll be meeting with administrators and coming back before you for approval so we can at least to include language in the contract is uh, the merit component. And um, the merit component is something that we're looking at uh, and you know, how, we'll do, how we'll come about that, what that'll be. We wanna come back before you and, and, and have the committee approve that. Because um, there's two different evaluation models. There's the principles that are, it's been, um, approved by our, our evaluation committee, but also the, um, I believe the, the, the school committee, but also it's the state model. And then there's the model that we're, at, we're working on to, to include the merit component for uh, our uh, central office administrators that aren't, that aren't principals. And um, we wanna come back before you to have that approved so that we don't have to come back. And, and, and that'll include different guidance in terms of you know, what the merit will be, how it would be applied, and what the criteria is. So hopefully at our next school committee meeting, or the, I should say the first school committee meeting in August, we'll come back before you. So um, again, uh, I, I think our administrators and, and, and have done an incredible job, um, an outstanding job this year. I would compare their performance to, to any of, of my colleagues' administrative team. Um, we were in interviews tonight and I was listening to some of the things that our administrators had done. And uh, I was just blown away. I wasn't even aware of some of the, the work that was being done throughout the year. So, um, so that's uh, where we stand with that. So I'm open to any questions and 
comments and Uh, thank you, Mr. Levis. Um, Mr. Florio, anything? I have no questions, Madam Chair. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. Murray. I don't have any questions at this time. All right. Um, Mrs. Colonian? No questions. You're good. And finally, Mr. Pearson? Uh, clarifying questions, uh, probably more so for the public than for myself, but just to make sure that the message is clear. Um, so, 2% um, salary increase pool added to this fiscal budget. Uh, however, you mentioned evaluations. So to be clear, each administrator will be evaluated and their final uh, salary increase will be based on all the factors you mentioned plus the evaluation, is that correct? Correct, correct. I mean, we're yeah. gonna include the, yeah. uh, we'll be including the, um, the merit component moving forward, yes. Yep, just want to make make that crystal clear for for people watching or reading the minutes um, that there are there are multiple factors being considered here and each administrator is being taken on an individual basis. Um, I think that's important to communicate that we're doing our due diligence because we want to encourage high performance. Um, and that's that's one of the, the strategies to get that done. So thank you for the clarification. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I, I think that um, I just want to say that. I've listened to the council conversations too about, you know, uh, not only, you know, attracting high quality uh, individuals, but retaining. And I, and I want to thank again, the, the policy subcommittee and the school committee, because, you know, since I, since I've been here, I think this is a really strong effort on the part of the committee to take a look at, you know, not only, you know, cost of living and, and, and acknowledging that component, but also, individual performance. And uh, we had something in the past, but that was just for the principal. So I think this, and it's, re, you know, it's realistic. And again, the process will be through the budget. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Um, I would welcome any comments from attendees that are gathered. If they want to raise their hand, um, please do so. Doesn't look like anyone's raising the hand. Nope. Well, we are already at citizens' comments. <laughs> um, so are there any uh, comments from the citizens gathered? Doesn't look like it. No. Wow. This is going to be a record, I think. Um, um, sorry about that. Moving I, on to... I have, has I have, his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'll make it. I'll you. make it quick, Madam Chair. The council yeah. is the council is looking at having a open meeting with uh, uh, with a Zoom component in at their meeting in September. I don't know if if we want to do the same thing. I think it's actually July. I is, think I think it's July twelfth. Okay. Or the twenty. Oh, I I think it's July, but I could be wrong. But. Um, Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. I thought I heard Ian say that today, but I could be mistaken. I, I don't know if we, wanna, if we wanna look at the same thing or if we even wanna address it because we don't know right now what September looks like, mm -hmm. but it may be if, if they're going to uh, do that, maybe at some point we may wanna follow their lead on that, but I'm not sure. I'm just I think Mr. I think Mr. Levis was going to speak to that well, actually before we scheduled a meeting. I think the next agenda item, if you don't mind, I'd like to, once we get into that, just make a. Yeah, I didn't see it yet, Mr. Levis. That's why I asked. So we'll all right. Have... Yeah, we're, we're thinking. We're definitely thinking about it, uh, Mr. Florio. So you are correct. We we are going to. Um... Look at it at some point. All right. So scheduling the next meeting. Did you want to talk about this, Mr. Sure, Roberts, just, before we two parts of that? I, I didn't know if the committee again. It's 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 up to the committee. But um, if we could, if you wanted to skip the next meeting, and I think it would be July twenty second is the is a Thursday, mm -hmm. and make our first meeting August twelfth. Then the other part is the committee, the council is gonna be in the chambers July 12th, I believe, which is Monday. 
I believe that uh, we, you know, that's what I, I had heard. I haven't checked their posting. The meeting should be posted now. And they were going to add a Zoom component, but, um, you know, we could, we could be uh, in, the, in the chambers and, and broadcast it as we did. I mean, it's, it's the will of the committee, but I, um, you know, the, we, we thought the governor, the executive session or executive order was going to end on the 23rd. Um, but then my understanding is he might have extended that. So, um, but it's the will of the committee. We could come back and meet in person. There's nothing against that from happening. It's up to the committee. Um, you could do a hybrid where you're back in person and we allow the you know, public to go Zoom. I do believe the council has that opportunity to do that at the chambers, I was told. Um, so, uh, and I know scheduling a meeting is not a violation of open meetings law. So we could, you know, we could make a decision that the next meeting will be um, August 12th, if you so choose, and then we can work on the details, I believe, offline. Um, I believe the Matt, governor has extended his executive order regarding meetings until the 29th. Uh, so even if we meet in person, we still have to afford the public um, alternative means to, to attend the meeting. So that would mean some kind of joint live zoom meeting a little tricky i'm not sure how the logistics would work but i'm sure mr murphy would figure that out for us is that the 29th of august july this is the last i checked but it's been a few days so something may have happened this week i am well, unaware of okay and that's what i'm saying does the committee i mean just you know again it's, i guess it's mr just levis mr levis i won't be here the 22nd uh i'll be on vacation as well i tried to arrange my vacation around your vacation so uh, uh, I won't be here the 22nd. Well, I guess so, that's the first question. I'm in favor of August 12th. Yeah, so I, I'm just raise your hand as a committee member if you're okay if we skip the second meeting in July. So just raise your hand if you're okay with that. So that looks unanimous, five to zero. Um, so the second question is if it looks like um, we want to go in person at town hall and follow the lead of the town council. Um, would you, I, I think from what I read um, about uh, Governor McGee's, um, the bill was passed, you know, to, to, to end his emergency or whatever. But I think with the exception of open meetings being still allowed to be by Zoom, but I could have, I, I, I might not have that wrong. Um, and I'm not sure what it was extended to, but I thought it was extended for a while. And, the, and so there were a couple of things exempted from the bill that passed. Um, but I have no pro I, I mean, I think we, you know, we should go in person if that's what the, um, you know, the town council's doing. I don't see it as a problem. The, I think that it's a little tricky to get um, participation by Zoom as opposed to just recording it and then letting, um, letting, Sorry, letting folks, um, you know, see the recording after. I'm not, I'm not sure how that all works, but we could figure that out and do what we think is the best. Um, so are there any comments about that? I mean, are you prepared to go in person on the 12th? So Dave, what do you say in August? I, August 12th, I'll be ready to go in person, but uh, I believe it depends on the, uh, Delta variant to see when, because people will be coming back from vacation. I want to see what the actual numbers and admissions are at the hospitals and uh, to see what is the outcome before we uh, make that decision. Uh, I, I know Mr. Levis and Mr. Cowworth are going to be right on top of that. So if, if they advise us and Mr. Anderson says that it's appropriate for us to return on August, August 12th. I have no issue with that, Madam Chair, none okay. whatsoever. Okay, Mrs. Colonian. I, um, I will actually be on vacation that week. I'm not sure okay. if I will be here or not, but um, if I am, I'm, I'm okay to uh, go back to in person. All right, um, Mr. Murray. Yeah, I, I think we need to go back in person. Um, I actually, during my vacation, I had, unfortunately had to make a presentation to the Warwick City Council on wow. Zoom, and they were 
in person. So mm -hmm. they just have a camera set up and I presented and we communicated as a group. So they had one live feed on Zoom on the camera and I just communicated and I think it worked well. So the technology is there. We need to get back in person. Um, yep. I love being at home, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's time. Yeah. All right. And finally, Mr. Pearson, how do you feel? I'm ready. Okay. All right. So um, is there a motion to schedule the next meeting? I'm trying to make a motion that the next virtual meeting or the next meeting, excuse me, the next meeting of the school committee be scheduled for Thursday, August 12th at 6 p.m. I second the motion. Thank you. Um, and could we have a roll call vote, please, Mrs. Martin? Catherine Patno? Yes. David Florio? Yes. Luke Murray? Yes. Donna Kalunian? Yes. James Pearson? Yes. Thank you. And do we, is there a motion to adjourn? I have 631. Wow. Madam, Chair, make, Madam Chair, I make a motion to adjourn at 6.31 p.m. I second the motion. Thank you. Um, just raise your hand if that's okay with you. So that looks like we have a five to zero motion carries. And for those of you who aren't gonna be here or might be on vacation or whatever at the next meeting, have a wonderful vacation, enjoy your time off and we will see you. Yeah. <laughs> have a great time, Donna. Um, we'll see everybody back um, after that meeting, um, but I'm sure we'll have a we'll have a quorum for that meeting. So thank you so much for your attention, everyone, and for attending. And have a good night. You too. You all just well. Take care. Okay, have great week. Donna, have a great vacation. You yep. too, Dave. Take care. Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye. Bye, -bye.